Now, how did they start worshipping the calf and what was the whole episode? You know, what happened was that when the night, the night when they were uh, leaving Egypt and they were migrating, what the women folk did was that they, they picked up all their jewelries because the love of gold, women with the love of gold and the love of gold has there been in all, all periods, in all times. So the women folk, they carried all their gold and all their jewelries and they brought them along with them, all their gold and jewelries. But when they reached the desert, all this gold and all the jewelry, it started seeming worthless. And it started seeming to them, it was very worthless and useless. So what they all did was, that they dumped all their jewelries in gold and it heaped up. Now there was a person which Quran mentioned as Samri. Quran has been mentioned, has mentioned about Samri. Samri was a person who had migrated along with Bani Israel. And he was somehow the religious and the religious and the political opponent of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And by trade, he was a goldsmith and he was also a magician. So he very cleverly, he gathered all the gold. And since he was a goldsmith, he melted the gold. And from the molten gold, he made the model of a calf. And he made the mouth of a calf. He was very clever and he was very expert in his skill. He made the mouth of a calf in a manner that when air would pass through the mouth, it would make a sound similar to the sound of a calf. You, you, you must have seen the toys of children, the rubber toys, when you press them and the air goes out of the whistle, it makes a sound. So similarly, some sort of a thing. So he made a golden calf with a queer sort of a sound coming from the mouth also and he presented it to the people of Bani Israel after Hazrat Musa salam, had left. So when they saw the people of Bani Israel, when they saw this miracle golden calf, they took it as their God and they started worshiping this miracle calf, miracle golden calf. Now, why did they worship this calf was because you know, the people of Egypt, their masters, their rulers, the Kipti nation, they, in their polytheism, they used to worship the cow. So out of uh, being impressed directly or indirectly being impressed by their rulers and by their masters, when in Egypt, they used to worship the calf also. So when this calf, which had basically like two love factors. One was the love of gold and one was the regard of the calf. So if this, if the calf was presented in this impressive and, and a very loving manner, so they uh, started worshiping this calf. Although they had been blessed with freedom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ensured and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had protected them and now had blessed them with freedom. But you know what? This freedom which they had acquired was just a, a physical or I can say a geographical sort of a freedom. But actually, mentally and socially, they were still a slave nation. They were still in a slave of mental and a social slavery. In fact, even a religious slavery. And they had not still come out of idolizing and following their masters. And so in this state of social and mental and even a state of religious slavery, they started worshiping the golden calf. Now there during his meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was informed about the act, the act of this polytheism by his followers. So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, the whole story is narrated in other surahs and chapters of Quran, and I'm explaining it here because we will be able to elaborate these verses more clearly also. And then Hazrat Musa in a state of anger and fury, he returned 
um, he questioned, first of all, his brother and then his followers, and he was very aggressively asking them, and he was very aggressive in his accountability. And finally, he, he also asked and he addressed Samri, and this debate, inshallah, we will be talking about in Surah Taha and Surah Qasas and Surah Shura in detail. But finally, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam ordered that the golden calf should be burnt. And he ordered that the ashes would be blown in air and they would be thrown in the flowing river. As Allah says in Quran that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam said, that they burnt the they burnt the golden calf to ashes and the ashes were then blown over in the air and they were thrown in the river to be flown away. This means what? This was the step of eradication of polities. So we understand that how strict and how harshly we need to eradicate any form of polytheism in the society. And then Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he turned towards his people and uh, what he did after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he addressed his people. <coughs> he turned towards the people and asked them to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the act of polytheism and for their worshiping the golden, uh, the golden calf. And uh, because of, uh, because of all the sin of polytheism they had committed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked them to seek forgiveness. But how would, how would they expected to seek forgiveness for polytheism was very different from how the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu seeks forgiveness. Because you know, the people of Bani Israel, they were a group of very obstinate, and stubborn, disobedient people. And because of this obstinacy and because of this stubborn disobedience, the orders which were given to Bani Israel, they were also much, much more strict as compared to the orders given to the Prophet Sallallahu followers. For example, in our religion, we, for forgiveness, for forgiveness in the followers of Prophet ﷺ, what do we need to do? We just need to accept what we did wrong and we just need to, in a state of regret, in a state of regret, after accepting and confessing our wrong do, deeds or sins and regretting, all what we need to do is we just need to utter the words of repentance. And this is all what we need for seeking forgiveness. Astaghfirullah Rabbi, or elaborating even more. Astaghfirullah Rabbi bin kulli zambin batu bole. Or verses like Rabbi khfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. Oh Allah, have mercy on us and forgive us because you are the most merciful. But for the people of Bani Israel to seek forgiveness from polytheism, and worshiping anybody else other than Allah. So for seeking forgiveness from this, they were supposed to kill the people who had worshiped any being other than Allah. So the calf was burnt and the people who had worshiped the calf, they were killed by those who had not worshiped the calf. And so their punishment was very strict. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here in this verse. So uh, what we learn from this verse is that the verse shows that how, how disliked worshiping beings other than Allah is and how disliked polytheism is in the, Allah, in the eyes of Allah. And the verses also eradicate, they also highlight how important it is to eradicate any forms of worships Allah the, other than Allah and how should, how firmly and how harshly and how strictly should all forms of polytheism be eradicated from the society or families or nations.